Hey folks, good morning and welcome to this special edition MC Commute coming to you live from the Arizona desert. Today we're going to be riding Indian Motorcycles 2022 Super Chief. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a cruise. All right, folks, here we are at the official North America press introduction of Indian Motorcycles 2022 Chief Heavyweight Cruiser lineup. Now, the Indian Motorcycle Chief lineup consists of three motorcycles. The Chief, the Chief Bobber, and the Super Chief, which we are riding right now and will be reviewing. Indian also has up-spec model versions of each three model with the Chief Dark Horse, the Bobber Dark Horse, and the Super Chief Limited. So six options in total from Indian motorcycles. This particular unit is the 2022 base model Super Chief. So this vehicle is equipped with the 1811cc or 111 cubic inch air-cooled V-twin engine. This motorcycle engine uses a 49 degree V angle so it's a little bit wider than the bar and shields brands but still relatively compact in terms of V angle compared to other major motorcycle manufacturers that that make their vehicles with V-twin engines. This Super Chief model rings in at $19,800. $19,800 for this vehicle. And that is a $1,300 upcharge versus the standard model and that's because it has this white paint. So this white paint is $1,300 upcharge. So $19,800 for this vehicle. One cool factoid about Indian motorcycles is that they are manufactured in Spirit Lake, Iowa. Manufactured in Spirit Lake, Iowa and they come with a two-year unlimited mileage warranty. We're just topping off the capacity of this four gallon fuel tank. So the steel fuel tank holds four gallons. We've been averaging right around 40 miles per gallon, right around 40, 41, 39. Just depends what speed we're going. Now, the reason why I like this Super Chief vehicle is because it's got a windshield and forward controls and floorboards so it's comfortable to operate and away we go guys we have spent the last day logging miles on these bikes and this Super Chief I'm naturally gravitating toward this Super Chief obviously this big removable windshield and the floorboards and forward mount controls that is my jam uh, the bikes that don't have that are less comfortable and when you're logging serious miles I like to have a fair degree of comfort on my motorcycle and this Super Chief delivers just that. And away we go guys. Cable actuated clutch on this vehicle. It augments the six speed transmission. This motorcycle uses a belt final drive that is positioned on the right side of the motorcycle so the Indian Scout motorcycle uses a left-hand side final drive this is a right-hand side 
an Indian motorcycle uses a right hand final drive on this motorcycle to help balance the, the reciprocating mass of that sprocket and the, the clutch which is on the left hand side of the engine. Indian says that it's a subtle tweak that helps make the bike have better balance in terms of handling. And handling is really one of the, the Super Chief's strong points. For a 749 pound bike, this bike is very heavy. But for a 749 pound bike, it is very nimble and easy to change directions on. What's up, doggy? Hi, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Doggy likes it. So agility and easy low speed handling manners is one of the strong points of this 749 pound Super Chief. Very easy to steer, very nimble for a big motorcycle. Now, this particular 111 cubic inch air-cooled engine, Indian unveiled this powertrain when they relaunched the brand for the 2014 model year. So this powertrain dates back to 2014. Now, this engine is neat because it just puts out a ton of torque. Lots of torque, lots of pleasing engine sound, the sound that emits from the right-hand side sweat, sweat mufflers. It's very pleasing. It's got a very nice tone to it when you give her some throttle. These big air-cooled V-twins, when Indian motorcycle manufactures these these engines, they there's a lot of character and and charisma engineered into this engine. So this engine offers quite a bit of vibration. And when the at lower RPMs, it's, the vibration is more muted, but you get this thing thing spinning at higher RPM, and oh my gosh, it vibrates. So. If you're the kind of rider who really wants that kind of character in, in a power power train, then you'll like it. But if you're looking for something that's just devoid of any buzz, you're going to want to look at a different motorcycle. Here we are cruising in top gear at 70 miles per hour and the engine vibration at this engine speed it's it's nice like I can feel it buzzing through the controls but it's not excessive at this engine running speed the view from the rear view mirrors is nice I can see what's going on behind me very well and at this speed this motorcycle does a pretty good job of gliding down the road just over five inches of suspension travel up front and right around three in the back when you hit when you hit big bumps or any broken pavement with that rear with the rear shocks you have to be a little bit careful because with its limited suspension travel that will jolt you and you'll certainly feel it in your spine when I know I'm gonna ride over a dip I like to lift my rear end a little bit just so that that jolt from the rear suspension hitting that object doesn't doesn't cause my spine discomfort it's worth noting that this vehicle does employ a pair of shocks a pair of coil spring shocks that are preload adjustable on either side of the motorcycle now this vehicle is designed to go up against the bar and shield brands heritage which was overhauled the bar and shield brand gave that vehicle a much needed overhaul i think for the 2017 or 2018 model year and with that platform 
The soft tail platform, they only use one shock absorber that sits underneath the rider's seat. So folks that want the, the experience of the outgoing bar and shield Dyna platform might like this platform because it does employ the dual coil spring shock absorbers. It generally works well, especially when you're cruising at freeway speeds. But like I said, when you hit broken pavement or big bumps with the rear suspension, you definitely will feel a jolt through the back of the bike. And realistically, it would be nice if the bike had more suspension travel at the rear. Hear that? 111 scream or more like roar I should say definitely has a good amount of torque and definitely has a pleasing sound and exhaust note throttle response this super chief employs a ride by wire throttle system so when you twist the throttle the computer sends a message to the throttle bodies to open them and that is how the motorcycle accelerates forward. Now Indian has done a good job of calibrating the throttle response on this motorcycle. I do like the throttle response. I do value the ability to switch the the throttle modes. So using this switch gear here, this finger trigger, you can adjust the power mode, throttle mode. So we were riding in standard, we have tour, and we have sport. I like sport the best because it gives the engine, it gives the engine a little bit more bark when you when you twist the throttle. Now the throttle it has good response but for whatever reason there is a dead zone with this throttle you have to twist it a little bit for it to, to to go into its operating window it's kind of strange another knock i have is it's, it just feels a little flimsy like if when you touch it it feels flimsy and there's no weight behind it it's just it's almost too easy to twist and it feels a little flimsy when you as you can see like moving it back and forth but I do like the ability to disengage cruise control by rolling the throttle forward. So this motorcycle comes with, with ride-by-wire enabled cruise control, which is extremely accurate. And when you want to cancel it, all you have to do is either touch on the brakes, pull on the clutch, or reverse the throttle. So that is a nice touch. This Super Chief uses this mixed analog digital instrument display. The display works good. It has a good amount of features, but really what you want is Indian's ride command fully digital round face instrument display. Now, to get that piece of electronics you have to go up into the Super Chief Limited which is another $1,200 more expensive than this vehicle in its white colorway and to me it's a shame that Indian doesn't use its ride command on every single one of its motorcycles because if there's one thing that Indian motorcycle does really well it's ride command and the ride command on the up-spec version of this motorcycle is just awesome. It's got a ton of features. It's got nice clean fonts that are legible. You can read it in direct sunlight. You can use the instrument panel with gloves while you're riding. It also has switch gear on the left handlebar that you can manipulate the menu system with too. But to be fair, the switch gear, it lacks a degree of tactility. So when you're using that menu and operating through the, the menu system, it's easy to fumble what menu and position you're in because the buttons don't have good feel. They just kind of feel cheap and, and, and flimsy. But besides that gripe, 
Indians ride command is a serious piece of hardware. I also like that it has GPS. It has a moving map GPS function built into it, which just makes navigating just so easy and so aesthetically pleasing. So good job to Indian on that. Their ride, ride command system. Geez, that was a big bump that hurt. Their ride command system also has a ride metrics function that tracks your journey, tells you how far you've gone, how much elevation you have climbed, and it's just really neat. You know, I wish Indian would just ditch this setup and just use ride command on everything. But that said, ride command so good, I would absolutely spring the additional $1,200 for the base Super Chief Limited to have just the ride command. Of course, with that upgrade also comes the larger displacement 116 cubic inch engine, but the real awesome thing is the ride command. This Super Chief rolls on a pair of 16 inch wheels shod with Pirelli Night Dragon Cruiser Rubber. Now all Indian motorcycles going forward from this year are going to be fitted with Pirelli tires. They're no longer partnering with Dunlop and they're going a different direction. I'm a big, I'm a fan of Dunlop and Pirelli and Michelin and all the tires, but it's nice to see a good high quality Italian rubber coming on these vehicles. LED lighting helps the Indian motorcycle rider stand out on the road. As you can see from this gentleman in front of me, LED tail lights are very nice. LED headlamp looks neat too. We did not get a chance to operate this vehicle after dark, so we can't comment on how functional the lighting hardware is on this motorcycle, but if it's an LED setup, it's probably going to be pretty good. Brakes. This motorcycle rolls on a pair of hydraulic disc brakes. One disc brake up front, one disc brake out back. 300 millimeter diameter rotors. It also has ABS, so you don't have to worry about using the brake lever or pedal too aggressively because the bike will never lock up the wheels because of the ABS. The calibration of the ABS is definitely more rudimentary feeling than most conventional standard 2021 20, motorcycles that have ABS, but realistically this bike isn't about hauling butt and sport performance. These heavyweight cruisers are designed to cruise and for that purpose the calibration is just fine but if you are operating this motorcycle in more of a sport manner you might be a little bit disappointed by the ABS calibration speaking of riding this vehicle in a sport like manner ground clearance now I'm not gonna lie with how nimble this motorcycle is, this thing is pretty fun to hustle from side to side on a twisty road. Problem is the cornering clearance is very limited. It doesn't take very much to start grinding hard parts on this motorcycle, which limits the fun somewhat. I don't know why these cruisers can't have added ground clearance. They should have added ground clearance. The clutch mechanism should offer a little bit more feel and easier lever pull. 
Now, the lever pull isn't like an old school cruiser from the 90s, but it still requires a couple finger tug on the lever to get it to, to be depressed. So a little bit lighter clutch lever pull and a little bit more clutch engagement feel would be welcome. Seat and creature comforts. I like how low the seat height is on this motorcycle. If you are a height challenged motorcycle rider, you're gonna like how easy it is to place both feet on the pavement. Yes, this motorcycle is a tad wide. Yes, it's heavy, but it's easy to stand flat footed. I'm sorry, sit flat footed while stopped. The seat has a nice cup effect. So your, your butt literally sits in this cup, which I really like. Now, we haven't ridden this motorcycle for enough duration to really be able to comment on its comfort factor. Initially, it, it feels decently comfortable, but at the same time, it, the padding isn't super deep. So I wonder if, you know, you did two or three tanks of fuel tanks on this motorcycle, how your rear end would feel. But, you know, for our stop and go style on and off riding, it is done fairly well. I like this handlebar bend. It's nice and wide, has plenty of sweep. This huge windscreen is also absolutely awesome. I don't know why anyone would buy a motorcycle without this windscreen. It just makes riding way more comfortable. And these floorboards are just, they just feel good. I wish there was a heel shifter. So working through the six speed gearbox, you have a conventional toe shifter. There is no heel shifting mechanism, which is kind of odd. Realistically, a motorcycle at this price point with these floorboards should have a heel shifter, in my opinion. This bike should also have heated grips. There are no heated grips. You know, for $19,800, I would like to see heated grips. Sorry, guys, I'm breaking the rules here a little bit. Don't tell on me. I'm going to blame it on him. He made me do it. Now, we spoke about the three throttle response mode adjustments, tour, standard, and sport. Through this menu, you can also adjust the cylinder deactivation function. So this vehicle has rear cylinder deactivation. So if you're riding during the warm summer months, riding in traffic, riding at Sturgis, and you don't want the engine -y heat to really burn up your legs, you can turn on cylinder deactivation and that that eliminates combustion in the rear cylinder at idle and that helps create a more comfortable cabin when you are idling in warmer weather. Conversely, because it's been so cold during our ride, I actually disabled cylinder deactivation. So at idle, both jugs are firing and that creates a lot more cockpit heat, which helps keep you a little bit warmer when the mercury drops and you're riding in slow speed stoplight to stoplight. Well, folks, here we are entering Sedona, Arizona, and that's what is so cool about these heavyweight cruiser style motorcycles. They are nice for just cruising and checking out the sights and sounds of mother nature. Low stress, easy engine hum, reasonably nice ride on smooth pavement. And that's where bikes like this 2022 Indian motorcycle Super Chief are in their element. 
Well, folks, that was a fun afternoon logging miles on Indian Motorcycles 2022 Super Chief. Now, we forgot to talk about this motorcycle's aesthetics. Now, Indian Motorcycle recently hired a very famous industrial designer. They lured him away from a certain Bavarian motorcycle manufacturer. His name is Oli Stengard. I'm probably butchering that. He is the craftsman behind the frame and the lines of this super chief. And I gotta give it to him. This guy has an eye for aesthetics. This motorcycle looks awesome. I love the the way the the frame curves down i love the way the pair both dual shocks are at this nice slant angle that 111 cubic inch engine is just on display in pure glory this is an aesthetically pleasing cruiser motorcycle now, would I spend $19,800 on this Super Chief? I personally would not. These heavyweight cruisers are just simply too limited in their versatility. These are one trick pony bikes. I need a motorcycle that offers more versatility than what a heavyweight cruiser can offer. But if I was the kind of rider looking for a heavyweight cruiser with good style, good performance within the American V-Twin space, I would consider looking at this motorcycle. It looks cool. It sounds cool. The engine has a ton of torque. Having these side bags and the windscreen make the motorcycle a little bit more versatile than a conventional cruiser without these components. And I just plain like the way this bike looks. Surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That is where all of our content is published. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please thumbs it down if you didn't. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this content today.